Hello, welcome to the Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy, I am very unprepared. Um, I got everything set up, went to start, and Worm went on a rampage, like ducked under the table. Uh, so I just threw everything over here, back in a pile, and I put him in his kennel. I'm a mean mommy, <laughs> I'm a mean mommy. Um, yeah it, it is what it is <laughs> so um yeah galatians 6 2 bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the laws of christ um this week i've had some things happen to friends and family that just have come to me and are talking and i've had to say this phrase several times and it hit me today that it's about timing and when we were talking about things that were going on um my words were i wish i had magic words to give you but there's no magic words there's no taking away your pain taking away your confusion taking away whatever it is that you're feeling until you work through it um and what works for me doesn't work for everybody else. And what works for everybody else doesn't work for me. So, um, I'm learning when to hold my tongue. Because, yes, everybody needs to hear the truth. Okay? And there's two perspectives to everything that goes on. That doesn't mean they need to hear the other perspective until they deal with their perspective of it. So, um... It is what it is, and yeah, the truth hurts a lot, and we say those things, you know, oh, they need to hear the truth, and and the truth hurts. 99% of it is in your delivery and your timing. I'm finding out that, and I guess I've always known it, but I've just been the kind of person that very cut, dry, you know, put it out there and deal with all of it. That's not exactly a good thing. So I'm learning to let people deal with theirs, with their issue, their story, their way. And then kind of put another perspective on it, but not in a way that makes them feel bad, for lack of any other good word. So I am working on that, you know, just being a good Christian. And I'm learning it's more about listening than putting those great words out there. You can have all the advice in the world, and it may work for you. Doesn't mean it's going to work for the world. Just saying. So, anyway, there's my little sermon for today. <laughs> um, that's what I'm working on. Hopefully, you're struggling with your own demons and working on your own demons. You know, if you ever need them on my prayer list, no judgment. Just say, hey. I could use a prayer or two. Um, I do have a blanket prayer for everyone. So, you're in there. But if you need a specific prayer, let me know. Alright, totally hooked. I don't have anything. And I know that's kind of disappointing. But, it's going to get better. I promise. So, in the basket. I have not gotten very far. I almost got caught working on this. And this is the green and gray sweater. And I am like nine rows in. I need to go. This whole piece has to measure 18 inches. So, I don't know. What am I? One, two, three, four inches in. So, I've still got, you know, over a foot to go. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I almost got caught. So, I've been scared to work on it much more, you know. Um, I'll tell you why I haven't worked on it today. Um, this is my day off and I'll tell you why in the farmhouse. The other one that I've been working on, and I have gotten quite a bit further, um, I'm doing four colors, five repeats of each, five rows of each color, and five repeats of each group. So it is looking very cute. It's super soft. I have one more row to go on the blue. I have been, uh, thinking about the fringe. Now this is for Krista and I'm going to make it as a poncho and there's two ways I could do the fringe and I want y'all to weigh in on this because 
I'm not a big fringe person, but Krista um, is mentally challenged, and one of her things is she likes to do fringe and, and pull at strings. And so I've made her uh, two fleece blankets. You know where you take the fleece and then you tie them together? Well, I sewed around hers and tied them and then made strings, and she likes to handle those. And she likes super soft. This is super soft. It's great. I can do it up my neck. It's actually, you know, baby yarn. So it's made to be super soft. Um, but I'm doing rows of five and I thought every other one, there'd be like, this is the purple and I do two purple and put purple fringe here, pink fringe here, uh, cream fringe here. But then I was also thinking I could put all the colors and just do it the same spacing, but have all the colors in the fringe across the bottom. So I, I want to know what you think of that. So I'm going to say solid or mixed is what I need to know. Solid colors to match the colors that are in that stripe or mixed all the way around the bottom. And I have a ton of this yarn, so I'm not even worried about running short of yarn for the fringe. I have it. The other thing, and this, it's been a long time since I got super excited about a yarn. And I got my kit. Let's just start there. I got my kit. And when I open, they, they come in a white package. And they're always scrunchy, so I know it's them. I don't even have to look at the return address. I don't even have to look. It's like, oh, my kit. Because <laughs> when you grab them from the mailbox, they're scrunchy or they're scrunched in there. So, um, yeah. When I first opened it, let me put it back like it was so y'all can see um when I first opened the white envelope this is what I saw that glare is causing you a problem but it didn't cause me a problem I didn't even look at the pattern but I did instantly go for this yarn to a point where I the band is coming undone <laughs> I don't care I don't care so this is the yarn it is muted earth tones if you look right here you can see that this is it's like a, a burgundy color and it's gorgeous everything is muted it's not super super vibrant this is almost that burgundy color too but it does have a little orange in it and you can see it's i mean it's amazing color the color is not exactly true to the there's probably the best true colors of this yarn so when i saw the yarn my first thought is i gotta open it i i had to touch it so i got it and yes it is soft enough to be around my face and what i noticed was that it says uh euro baby maypole dk so it's dk weight um I'm going to guess this is a baby yarn, and the colorway is Carnival. There it is. Um, it's color number 25, Carnival. And it is, it's got purples in there. It's got, I just, every time I look, there's, there's blues, there's greens, there is, my, it, it's like the colors of the rainbow. And I love it. And they're almost, I, I'm not sure of the difference between earth tones and jewel tones, but they're almost, I would say, a jewel tone. And I'm not, but they're not like, pow, in your face, bright. And that's the part that is not me. I'm not a in your face, bright person. Um, but I love this color. This is just amazing. Um, so I read on here, and there is, once I got it in my hands, I was like, oh my goodness. I still at this point hadn't even looked at the pattern. There's 262 yards in each one of these. So that puts me at a thousand plus yards. Like, I guess 48, a thousand, 48, a thousand, yeah, whatever. It puts me at a thousand yards. And I think it's like a thousand, 48, whatever. So I want y'all to picture this yarn. Have four balls think of the virus shawl that I made into a poncho this would be an amazing poncho 
My problem is, is that I don't know if I have enough because it is a DK weight and the worsted weight made it th thicker. But what I thought is I can make myself a shawl and then if, if it's big enough, I could make it into a poncho, which is just seaming it up, match it up and seam it up. And then it hit me. I could also just go and order more yarn. <laughs> I never think of that because I have so much yarn. But if I needed, say, one more ball or two more balls of this, I could locate some and purchase it and make it big enough to be a poncho. So this may be a poncho. So at this point, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a beautiful poncho. Then I turned it over and I finally looked at the pattern. Well, now I've got a dilemma because <laughs> it's, it's a cute little, it says um, wrap or scarf. So here it's being used as a scarf and it looks too big and bulky for me. But guess what? That's not, and that really is pretty. And it seems to be a super easy pattern. It's two rows and you just repeat and weave in all the ends. Um, it says repeat, well, you do the first row, you chain 65, do the first row, which is again, gonna be your foundation. And then row two is repeated until the piece measures uh, 80 inches. Then you weave in the end. So it's literally one pattern, one row pattern. So it honestly, it should be super easy. But dang, wouldn't that look amazing as a virus poncho? Okay, okay. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Yes, I should probably attempt the pattern, but I could make, I have other yarn that I could make the pon this one with. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, there's also that other, I, I made it years ago, but it's a virus shawl with a grainy square variation on it. And I haven't tried to make that into a poncho, but I could. That's me contemplating. <laughs> um, we'll see what I end up doing. The truth is, is I'm getting ready to go on vacation. Okay, so I don't have anything. We'll just skip ahead because that's what's in the baskets. I don't have anything in the pots. I still have that one on the wheel. I, I started working through what worm had attacked. Um, haven't gotten very far. Just haven't spent a whole lot of time on it. Um, RJ's World, working in rodeo and riding horses. That's it. No major event. Um, he did win. And this is terrible. And it's going to sound terrible. There's really no way. Again, it's about perspective. So please keep this in perspective. RJ went to a team roping on Sunday. He'd had a really bad week um, kip roping. He had placed at only one rodeo. That's how he makes his paycheck. That's how he makes his living. You know, the training horses is just to offset the cost of um, everything else. So he'd gone rodeo and not done very well. And this guy, hey, can you come and be my partner at this team roping? RJ's like, okay, fine. So the way it works in team roping is you pick one of your partners and then at the other, um, rotations it's a draw so if it says pick one draw two or pick one draw three so that me if it's pick one draw two you have three runs you get to pick your first one and then you draw from the pot and all of them are mixed up the reason that they do that is so that they can get an overall winner because they have one prize that they're going to give away to the top man, not the top team. So if, if RJ wins with his partner that he's picked and then he wins with the others, he can be top man, but the other guys, you know, would have to do as well as him. So he has to be the fastest time and he has to be consistent in order to win. So he went to this team rope and I think it was a 
a pick one, draw two. It may have been a pick one, draw three. I'm not sure. Anyway, so he went because this guy had said, hey, would you be my pick one? So I just say, like, okay, I'll go. So he also did pretty well with his other partners. So he won a steer roping dummy, a huge thing that goes behind a four-wheeler and you drive it around and then they practice team roping and it's so you don't have to have cattle. Well, RJ's not a team roper. He just went to help his buddy out. And then he won something that he can't really use. And he goes, Mom, I hate to say it, it's going to sit out here and it's not ever going to be used. And he said, this guy called me and said, hey, would you want to sell that? Now, the guy knows that he's won it, number one. So he knows that RJ really doesn't have anything but his entry fees in it. And when he talked to RJ, he already had been looking into buying one online, just like it, only a different brand. And he knew how expensive they were. So, RJ did end up selling his prize. Um, if it was something that he could have used, it would have been a different story. Um, he has one saddles, and this is just RJ, okay? He has sold saddles that he's won before. But, RJ sold the... There's two or three of them that I can think of that he's done. There was a kid, I say kid, he's 18. He's younger than RJ, okay? At the time that RJ sold him the saddle that he won, this young man was like 17. And he'd never had a saddle of his own. Um, he actually had bought his first horse off of RJ. And RJ knew it. So, RJ, um, and he's still friends with them. RJ made him a deal. He won the saddle. And RJ's like, man, just what I need. A team rope and saddle. I'm not a team roper. My calf rope and saddles work. I'm probably never going to use this. The horns are different. And there's some different um, stuff on a team roping saddle than on a calf roping saddle. Um, there's different strengths of the trees. I'm not going to get into how it breaks down. But anyway, it was a team roping saddle. And this young man was starting to team rope and he didn't have his own horse until he bought it from RJ and he knew that he was still using like his dad's or his grandpa's or his uncle's old saddle. And RJ started out that way. If you remember, we have Uncle Schultz, his great uncle's saddle that is hard as rocks, made back in the 1950s and that's what RJ started roping on. And it was way too big for him. So RJ won this one saddle and it fit him and this kid is the same size as him so rj was at the truck and he says man just what i need a team rope and saddle i've got plenty of calf rope and saddles i just use those for team roping because i don't do it all the time um he basically team ropes to help his buddies um because they need a good partner and if RJ can catch, that's all that's required, really. I mean, his horse will turn and face just because he makes them. So, um, anyway, this young man was standing there. He goes, man, and he started dreaming. He says, man, if I could win a saddle, he said, it'd be my very own, blah, blah, blah. RJ turns and pops off, and he goes, why don't you just buy this one? And the kid looks at him. He goes, I don't have that kind of money. That That's an expensive saddle. And it is. Saddles are expensive. They can run... A thousand to two thousand um, dollars. You can find them really, really in bad shape at pawn shops for a couple hundred. But then you've got to put, you know, if you can get it bought for most of the time, they're five hundred, um, three three hundred and fifty to five hundred. Then you've got to put three hundred and fifty to five hundred in to have them redone. That's a lot of money to a seventeen-year-old. That's a lot of money to anybody right now. So RJ had popped off and he said, why don't you just buy this one for me? And he said, nah, man, I, I just don't have it. So RJ said, I'll tell you what, you win money in your round. And he said, and we'll see about, you know, we'll, we'll make a deal. 
And the kid thought he was kidding. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, the kid went out there and he won. He doubled his money. I don't remember how much he won. Okay, I know that the first payment was $250. So he must have won like $500. He got his $250 entry fees back. And then RJ looks at him and he says, all right. He said, I'll sell you that saddle for half of your winnings from now until it's paid off and you pay me $500. That saddle was worth a heck of a lot more, but that kid couldn't afford a whole lot. He looked at RJ and he goes, hang on, I gotta go get my paycheck. He went and he got him, he says, I've got 250 right now. RJ says, good deal, take your saddle home, you owe me 250 bucks. So the kid hands RJ the cash, takes the saddle, and he, he's 17, he's just proud as can be, and he's over there, and he takes it. Well, here come his dad, or I think it was his grandpa. I don't think it was his dad. And the grandpa cornered RJ, and he said, hey, now, this is what I was told. RJ looked at the man, he goes, yes, sir, you were told the facts, but he left out one, and he said, this deal is not between, because the old man was going to pay it. He's like, let me just, RJ said, no, sir. He said, you missed one fact. This is a deal between me and that young man. He says, if he doesn't pay me, I will have learned a lesson. He says, if he does pay me, he will have learned a lesson. And he'll have his own saddle. He's got his own horse now. He'll have his own saddle and he's on his way to being what he wants to be and doing what he wants to do. The old man looked at RJ and he, tears streaming in his face, he goes, nobody's ever done that for him. And he says, and the only reason I can do it is because he'd gotten, he'd sold something and he actually had the cash. They, they didn't come in this big fancy truck and everything. They didn't have a lot of money. A $500 saddle was a big expense to them, but the fact that that saddle was worth like 250, I mean, 2,500, that was something they never would have been able to afford for him. So anyway, to this day, um, that kid, he called RJ probably the very next weekend and said, I'm entering this rope and if I win, he says, I'll give you half, you know, after I get my entry fees back, I'll give you everything. He says, I'll keep you a little cash so you can enter next time and you just make payments on it. Well, the kid won some and then the, a couple of weekends later or so, RJ came beaming in the house and he goes, Mom, we did good. And I looked and I said, we, I didn't do, what are we doing? And uh, he said that the young man had won a really big roping on the horse that RJ had trained, on the saddle that RJ had sold him, and that young man came and paid his debt in full. And he said the grandpa, or it, I want to say it was grandpa because he looked a little bit older. Um, but anyway, I, I don't, it might be his dad, but I think it's his grandpa. I think he's raised by his grandpa. Anyway, he calls him Pops. So it could be grandpa, could be dad. So Pops was just beaming proud that the young man had pay, bought and paid for his own saddle with money he'd won and he looked at the young man, he says, you know, knowing that you owed somebody, he says, you roped harder and better because you knew you had to win and all the money came from winnings. RJ didn't take and say, you gotta go get a job or whatever. He says, when you win, you pay me. There was rodeos in there that he entered and he didn't do any good. But this man, this young man definitely needed that saddle. So anyway, to cut this story off, RJ does sell things that he wins if he doesn't need them and if they're just going to sit and rot because they need to. And this dummy definitely needed to go to a new home. So he was, he did sell it. And he said, Mom, I made my truck payment for two months. <laughs> That's a good thing. So, yeah. All right. In the farmhouse. Um, it is raining. 
that's why worm was running around being crazy earlier and i had to reset up i'm just glad that i caught the laptop <laughs> yeah he came and right underneath my little table that i record on i was like oh my god so that we are getting ready for our every other year trip to branson rg doesn't know if he's going to come this year um he told me he says honestly mom i don't know um he's got that job on thursdays he's got horses he's got to ride he's got other things going on um i had to make a trip up to the farm today um for those of you who have followed us way back jethro our great pyrenees and RJ and I struggled with this for a little bit because we didn't realize he was getting that old. We've said he was five years old, apparently, for like the last three years, four years. Jethro, we went back and looked, he is almost 10. That's old for a, a large breed dog. Um, he's getting around a little slower. He's not really wanting to eat. So he's getting a little thin i went up and i took some medication to increase his appetite i took him some warmer and some i gave him some wet dog food fed him and sat on the porch with him while he ate made sure he ate everything which he did so that's good <laughs> and i spent some time up there doing a few other things uh and then came back to this house and I'm podcasting, cleaning up, doing laundry. Um, I'm going to get in a little crochet time. Uh, my kit came in the mail, so that put a dead stop. I so want to start that. But I think I'm going to take this one and <laughs> this one, whatever it turns into be, to Branson. Here's the thing because i will have time that um my daughter's coming down the first okay so we check in after four or something on friday and we'll be there till the following friday roommate's going to come with me uh roommate hasn't done the branson thing in quite a long time and i didn't want to spend the time if rj comes he normally comes during the week tori always comes on a weekend so they're normally there two days each. Well, that's only four days out of the week. And I don't want to sit around and do it by myself. I'm kind of to that point where there's certain things doing by myself are okay. I'm okay, you know, living my life on the days that roommate's gone. You know, I don't have a problem living life by myself. What I have a problem with is it's pretty lonely to eat by yourself. Um and being on vacation i've never done it by myself and there's wineries there there's the fish hatchery that we always go to um tori's gonna go to the fish hatchery with me because she hasn't been there since she was a little kid when she and her other half went it was closed so we're gonna go there saturday she's gonna be down there she's coming down friday night with us and then saturday and then she's leaving sunday because they have to be back monday morning for work um so we'll do the fish hatchery and then there's a museum up on the dam that we've done and tori hasn't done it since she was a little bitty and those things have changed so we're gonna do that uh there's the wineries that i want to go to there is the museums that are up at the university up at hollister which is literally up the hill from branson <laughs> and so we're gonna do and there's a bunch of junk shops um dick's five and dime and stuff like that RJ has been there. This will be the first time he hasn't gone since he was eight years old. Um, every two years. This will be the first time he's missed. Um, Tori has missed in between there. This is only her second time going with me as an adult. When she got her adult life, she quit going with us. So um, she has learned that that is mom-daughter time that is time as a family and it took her getting in her 30s to realize that so rj has always gone this will be the first time that he's missed if he misses he says mom i'm gonna try 
but he says he's got so much going on and we are going in the middle of October, which his birthday is October 6th. So he'll probably want to spend that with his girlfriend and just, he's got horses to ride. He's got that job now. He is adulting and it might actually cut in. It doesn't mean that he won't go in the future. It just means this time. And it's the first time that I will have gone to Branson without him, first off. He's always been with me at Branson. Um, of course, the kids' dad has never been to Branson with us as a family. He just didn't want to do that. Um, and then Tori, of course, will be there. So I'll have a lot of downtime that I, I would be by myself. So roommate has decided to go so I don't have to be by myself which I'm kind of excited about you know um, if roommate hasn't been to Branson in you know 15 years then there's a lot of difference there there's some museums there is uh, of course the hatchery which roommate hasn't done so uh and we're both outdoorsy we both like fishing and stuff so i think that roommate would enjoy it there's some museums there's the university is amazing they've got old fiber mills and and just the jelly they show you how to make jelly and all this stuff it's just super cool if you have not been to the university up there um you need to go just make it a day trip and go if you can because that is amazing the college that i'm talking about is the one that i took ashley and to when i went um to branson when i took the interns with me that one year uh we took them up there and the school only pays teachers and of course administrative staff they do not pay and they have a whole like farm to table restaurant they have a museums up there they have a fiber mill where you can buy um, beautiful hand woven stuff but guess what that's how these kids pay and they walk away from college with absolutely no debt no student loans no anything it's super hard to get into you have to be willing to work uh, they have their own herd of cattle for beef. They have their own herd of cattle for milk. They have, you know, so many jobs. They have, I don't know how many greenhouses that they grow their own vegetables. And all these vegetables and the beef and the milk and all that is used in the restaurant. The lawn people are not a professional crew. That's the students. You have to work your way through this college. And they work their way through with no debt it's amazing and i took our interns there rj's been there um we like to support it just because and, and like i said they have a fiber arts studio in an old mill um and it's it's amazing they have looms they have um i don't remember if they had spinning wheels or not i know they had a bunch of looms that they wove um I actually provided them with a packet of dyes, the natural dyes that I use, greener shades, to one of the girls that was there. I sent it and she was going to use it in her classes because they get, you know, um, I don't want to say extra credit for things that they introduce if they can teach someone something. So if they teach everyone that's in the fiber program, um, then they can um they get paid for that but it's not paid towards them it's to their bill they have oh they have stained glass there too handmade stained glass they have a whole department that does stained glass it's amazing and they do it old-fashioned one there's a church there that's super cool um they have some scenic overviews there at the college it, it's amazing so anyway roommate hasn't done any of that and roommate's gonna go with me so that right there makes it fun, you know, exploring places. Uh, 
just having downtime with no work. That's what it's about. <laughs> and having time with my kids. So RJ may not get to go, but he's going to try. And then uh, Tori, of course, will be there. So, yeah. Okay, I think I've carried on enough. You guys know what's going on in my life. You know what's going on in my basket. I so want to start that thing. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So today I haven't gotten to work on anything because I did all the running. Just saying. I had other stuff that I had to do. Jethro, go up to the farm. Anyway. So, you guys, I'm going to get off here before I just start babbling. Uh, too late. <laughs> all right. Um, try and live the verse. You know, be a friend. Know when to say stuff and when not to. Be a good Christian this week. And hopefully I'll have some something to show you finished next week when you come. So you guys oh and like and subscribe. RJ's like, Mom, like and subscribe. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And I will see you again next week. Bye.